Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today. My name is Christian and today we're here to talk about the new record from Goldfinger. It is titled The Knife. This is the band's seventh studio record and the follow up to 2008's Hello Destiny. That's right, this is the band's first record in nine whole years. And as well as that, this also shows the band now just being the sole member of John Feldman, which will leave a lot of people going, really, is this a Goldfinger record? But Trust me, this is a Goldfinger record. But at the same time, this is a massive collaboration with some of the biggest bands in the pop punk and punk rock scene with members of Blink-182 being on this record, as well as members of bands like MXPX, The Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, 1OK Rock, and Story of the Year. And you know what? I really like this record. This really, really surprised me, especially considering I went into the record with basically zero expectations. This record is full of well-written, fun, catchy songs with some great guest appearances and a lot of the heart which made Goldfinger so special in the first place. So, let's get into it. Now, there are going to be a lot of people straight off the bat that say that this isn't a Goldfinger record, that this is more of a John Feldman and Friends record. And if the record didn't sound the way that it does, then I would agree with you. But because it sounds so much like Goldfinger from back in the day, I have to disagree with everyone saying that this isn't a Goldfinger record. For me, and in my opinion, this record contains all of the soul that was originally in Goldfinger, from the fast pop punk tracks to the scar-tinged boppy tracks. This is honestly a very well-written record, which is something that surprised me because John Feldman has been out of the songwriting game for such a long time and been focusing more on his producing. Now, to be fair, he does a lot of writing with the bands who he produces, but to write just all of his own songs, it's been, as I said, nine years. So I really wasn't expecting that much great songwriting. And sure, there are moments where the songwriting isn't all that great, but for the most part, it is actually really good. A Million Miles and Get What I Need open up up this record with a one-two punch that sounds absolutely brilliant and really sets the tone for what you're going to hear for the entire record. In fact, these two songs kind of blend together to sound like one big long song and I really, really enjoy that. They both really have all of the different types of sounds that you're going to hear for the rest of the record with the first track, A Million Miles, being more of the fast pop punk and then having Get What I Need add more of the sky element. As I said, there are a lot of collaborations on this record and they all do so much to add a lot to a large majority of these tracks. There are just so many members of pretty great punk rock bands on this record and... Honestly, without them on this record, I don't know if it would be as good. Now, there are going to be a lot of comparisons between this record and Blink-182's California. Not only are the members of Blink on this record, with Travis doing the majority of the drumming, but as well as that, I really feel as though Blink-182's songwriting has really rubbed off on John Feldman as he was the one who produced that record. And you can really hear that in some of the vocal melodies in particular. Don't Let Me Go is easily my favourite track on this record, purely because of its emotion and it just sounds heart felt. Now there's a chorus on this track that is just so full of emotion that it's one of those choruses where you just want to close your eyes and sing along to it and really feel every single note. And songs like that don't come around all that often and I'm really glad there's one of those songs on this record. I really love the instrumentation behind this track as well. It's so different for a song of this kind of style and it suits the melody so, so well. 1OK Rock vocalist Takahiro also makes a guest appearance on this track and really knocks it out of the park. I've really come to love this guy's voice and I can't wait to hear more from him. Beacon is another highlight on this record for me and this is a track that when I listen to it, I swear to God, God, I hear Matt Skiba. Now, Matt Skiba hasn't been mentioned among the collaborators of this record, but if it isn't him on this track, then John Feldman is doing a fucking amazing impression. But whether he is or isn't here, this track still slams. I love the use of Scar on this record. It's only ever really used when it gets to a point where you feel like the record needs a bit of a change of pace, and that's when those Scar tracks will come in. And Scar tinged tracks like Get What I Need and Who's Laughing Now are the perfect way to set in that change of pace. The drumming on this record is also incredible, and that is no surprise after you see 
who were the people drumming on this record. For the majority, as I said, it is Travis Barker from Blink-182, but Josh Dunn from 21 Pilots also comes in on this record and he also knocks it out of the park. See You Around is another track that really stands out to me. I love the delayed guitars in the verse and this track has probably one of the biggest choruses on the entire record. Mark Hoppus makes an appearance on this track and I love how his voice suits the tone of this song. As I said, the guest appearances on this record are really done to their full potential and this track is absolutely no different. The vocals are what really steal the show for me on this record. Not only are the guest appearances fantastic, but John Feldman sounds phenomenal. Tracks like Put the Knife Away and Don't Let Me Go really show why this guy is such an icon in the alternative scene. Now, even with all the positives that I've just talked about on this record, this record is far from perfect. There are some songs that really don't hit the mark. Songs like Tijuana Sunrise. But the worst track for me on this record is easily Orthodontist Girl, which is just a combination of bad instrumentation and horrible lyricism to combine into a track that is really, really cringy to listen to. It's almost unbearable. This song really just brings the whole record down and I can't understand for the life of me why John decided to put this track on the record. Finally, the production on this record has been done phenomenally. Of course, John Feldman produced this record and something that started to happen recently is that John has started to add some grit back into his production style, which is something that was really, really needed. And it's made such a difference. Again, this record is gonna be compared to Blink-182's California in the production style, but honestly, that record sounds phenomenal. So the fact that this record sounds like that one as far as the production goes, isn't a problem to me at all. Overall, I think this is the best possible comeback record for Goldfinger that we ever possibly could have expected. It's so fun, it sounds vital, there's so much emotion in there, and overall, the songs are just written really well for the most part. And I'm actually really excited to see these songs live, so here's hoping they come to Australia. My top three tracks are gonna be Don't Let Me Go, Beacon, and See You Around, and I'm gonna give this record a three and a half out of five. Anyway, what did you guys think about the record? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. Did you like the record? Did you not like the record? Let me know down below. We're here to have a conversation about music, so let's do that. But if you're just gonna fill up the comment section with hate and insults, then just know I'm gonna read your comments and love how pathetic your life is. Anyway, thanks for watching my VH, so guys, please hit subscribe down below, and I will see you next time. Fresh Currents. Oh, <laughs>